Like, would you suggest a different way of doing things in terms of maybe is there another metric we should be measuring or some 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 other way to measure things that would actually align different departments you know, closer together to solve a problem. And I'll give you an example. Let's say, uh, like, not to say this is the metric we should use, because I remember you, uh, you, you had a, a lot to say about, let's say, GDP productivity, <laughs> as a GDP per capita as a measure of productivity, right? If we use that as a metric, right, and all the departments had to adhere to, like, hey, we want to re- increase this by, I don't know, whatever it is, 1%, right? Then would that be something that would kind of get everyone rowing in the same direction? And the reason why I, I bring this up is to say, you know, one of the things in healthcare is, as, as you well know, is there's a lot of inefficiencies. One of the most common ones that people cite is probably they're the, like the only people that still use a fax machine. Like, I think that, 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 like fax machines, no one else buys them. It's like just the healthcare sectors or your, your doctor is the only one that uses a fax machine. If they didn't use fax machines and just use like, let's say emails now more than fax machines, that would assume it's a, a would be, would speed things up, right? So what is your thought process around that? Are there certain things that we can change that will align everyone to kind of roll in the same direction? So I think it's good to have clear metrics and to want to drive multiple departments, you know, across the system um, towards consistent action on the same metrics. I think that that's a generally good thing to do. I think governments generally don't do a very good job of trying to distill down the implications of all the decisions that they make to those metrics. So if GDP per capita was the thing that we agreed we wanted to focus on, having departments use it as a metric to guide their decisions, not a bad thing necessarily. But now let me say why I think GDP per capita is maybe not the thing that we want to um, use. Um, One, GDP doesn't necessarily bring in all of the things in it that, you know, matter today, right? It doesn't really measure data. It doesn't measure intangibles um, very well. And those increasingly matter to future economic growth, clearly. Um, And, you know, there's a separate question about whether the denominator of per capita is going to tell you enough about whether you're going in the right direction, because there may be situations like we're kind of experiencing right now in Canada, where you get a boom of of people. So the denominator grows, and it grows faster than income grows. And it looks like your GDP per capita is going down, meaning that you're getting poor. Well, actually, in reality, nobody is getting individually poor. People could still be all, literally every one of us could be becoming richer it's just that we're we're growing richer in different ways because some of us started a little bit poorer. And even though they are richer, if we have more of those people who are poor, the pie looks like it has shrunk, even if comp, even if that's just a compositional effect, right? And and that's kind of what's happening right now. And it's it's been interesting to watch how that's played out in our policy debates. And it would it might tell you that, Mel, maybe you you want to slow down immigration, but actually what it should probably be telling you is you actually want to look under the hood more at the kind of immigration that you're getting, right? And so just focusing on GDP per capita may not be giving us the right signals from a policy level to to figure out what we want to do. The other thing I would say, though, is if you ask Canadians, what are the things that they care about and want governments to be focused on as they make budgeting decisions? There's a lot of research that suggests that GDP is not the thing that actually Canadians would like governments to be focused on when it comes to their finances. they care about actually employment. And it's interesting because to the productivity discussion, right? We could actually work less as a society if we were more productive, right? Um, Because we would just become better at the things that we have to do in a given week. And we could enjoy more of leisure, except most Canadians don't don't think about that trade-off. They think about the trade-off, meaning I'm either going to have to work harder or I'm not going to have a job. And so most Canadians actually think that the right trade-off is that we should focus more on employment and unemployment rather than thinking about productivity. And if we think about more employment and unemployment, we might be missing focusing on things like the capital intensity of our businesses, which we know is a problem in Canada and which has resulted in Canada having to work more hours to get the same level of output as some of our other peer countries. And the other thing I would say is that, again, looking at what Canadians say they would like to see in budgeting. There's been a lot of discussion in the last number of years before COVID about what we call quality of life budgeting. The idea being that you make decisions, you allocate resources in a way that tries to improve things like happiness, things like uh, reducing inequality, improving um, economic efficiency, but also looking at productivity, but in a way that that isn't just an exclusive focus on productivity. And some countries like you know New Zealand have actually instituted quality of life budgeting into their budget processes. 
Um, and I would say it's, it's had some interesting results. Um, it leads you in the direction of deciding to say, invest in things that, um, you know, like for example, street clearance uh, and, and snow clearance has a, an effect on making, li uh, making communities more livable, which has an effect on gender, um, uh, gender inequality, believe it or not. And, and so it can lead you in some really surprising directions. That whole debate about quality of life budgeting kind of went away after COVID. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether it comes back.